Hello YouTubers! Welcome to my video. Today we're going to be working on a Cobra 29 classic model. We're going to be doing the MOSFET conversion. And I just want to show you how to do that so that you can do it yourself and it's much cheaper and it's not very hard. Um, I got this CB at a yard sale for a couple of dollars. It had some scratchy knobs, you know, the, just needed to clean the controls and the meter was bad. So I got a new meter. I don't know if you can see this very well on the uh, camera. But right here, I took the incandescent bulb out and I put in one of those flat strips with three LEDs on there and they really look great. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and power it up and show you. I've never done that before and uh, they came out really bright. Turn that fans back off with my power supply, but yeah. See, there's the three LEDs. It's just a flat strip that runs on 12 volts. I've got the wires coming off right here. So, uh, that's pretty neat. But anyway, back to the mod. Let me turn these uh, power supply off. It's making a lot of fan noise. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove R55, 56, and 61. The locations. Here's the final right here. Here's one of them. Here's one, and here's the other one. So we're going to pull them out real quick. I'm going to try to stay off the camera, so hopefully I won't get in the way too much. Alright, sometimes... It's helpful to uh, add a little bit of solder to an old solder joint like that because they don't want to they don't want to come loose. Just add a little bit, add a little bit. Should come off a little easier now. This is cheap ham fest solder wick, so sometimes it don't wick too good. It's working. What do you want for a dollar a roll? Belly man, don't buy that. It's cheap and it's junk. It's working. I don't remember which one was which. I just I pre-marked them. That way I didn't have to fumble around looking for the components on the trace side. Our wick's not that good. So hopefully I can... Oh, there goes my meter. There's our 
456. Don't look too good. Got some green stalactites on it. Uh, R50. There it is. R55. And 61 is over here. There it is. You're just going to leave these out, except for uh, R56. We're going to put another part in place uh, here in a minute. All right. Next thing you want to do, I'm going to unsolder the final. We're going to pull that out, too. Best bet on that with that cheesy solder wick. You just heat the legs up and lift up on them just like that. Best to leave it bolted to the chassis while you're doing this so it holds itself firm. You really don't have to get rid of all that solder. You can just solder the new one right down into it. Trying to stay off the camera, but I don't have a way to to tell if I'm in the way or not. There's the old one, 2SC2029, we won't be using that anymore. You want to make sure that this uh, insulator stays put, because if you don't put it back, you're going to have some problems. All right, we're going to cut the video. i got to locate some parts. Okay, we're back. Got my dab of heat sink compound on the back there. And I'm going to have to turn this because I can't work with that in that direction. Just uh, try to get that transistor back up in there. It's a little bit tight. If I get in the way of the camera, I do apologize. Before you tighten that, it's probably a good idea to go ahead
ahead and solder those pins on. That way it's in the right spot before you tighten it. I'm just going to clip a little bit off of them. Since I got a pretty big gob of solder there, I'm going to try to push them down a little farther when I melt the solder. Now these look clear in between here, but it's always a good idea just to kind of scrape, just to make sure you didn't get nothing in there. Um, by the way, that final that I'm putting in there is a uh, IRF 520, and it takes a companion part, EN369FN, Foxtrot November, and it goes in the same place that you took out R56 over here next to the final. It's a bias part. Now the, there's a plus side and a minus side. The plus side goes towards the front of the radio. Or this bump goes against this wall right there. So let's see. Yeah, I have to spread it around. I'll spread the legs out a little. Don't squeeze that very hard or you'll crack it. There we go. There, flip it over. This little excess. All right. One other note here. Most radios have a little tuning slug right here at L14. This one is already gone and sealed up, so nothing there. But if yours has that, take it out and throw it as far as it'll go. We're almost
almost done. Just got to solder a 68 picofarad capacitor right here on the back of C59, which is uh, right across here. Now the ceramic disc capacitor is not polarized, so it doesn't matter which way it goes. All right, we're back. I went ahead and positioned this. Remember, I said it was a 68 picofarad across C59, and I'm just going to go ahead and solder it in. All right, guys, that's about it. Um, some instructions say to spread apart L14 a little bit, which is this one here. Uh, you can if you want. I'm sorry, L12. What am I talking about? You can if you want, but I don't think it makes much difference. Even if it does, one or two watts one way or the other doesn't make any difference. But we're going to go ahead and hook it up and uh, test it, and I'll show you what I find out. Thanks. Hey guys, I got this thing working now. Uh, I wound up putting a variable dead key circuit in there. Uh, just with the modification it wound up with about a 4 watt dead key and I wasn't real happy with that and um, also this can right here it's I think it's L17 you should tune that for uh, peak output it was already pretty close but I think I got a couple of extra watts out of it and I added this transistor it's a TIP3055 and I hooked it in front here with the um, SWR Cal knob and I can vary the dead key. I got it set for about a watt and a half right now. And you can see that we're on a, uh, it's a 20 watt scale. That's about a watt and a half. Alright, let me, let me show you. See I'm just uh, I'm varying the SWR Cal knob right there so I can vary it all the way down. Set it for about a watt and a half. And that's the 20 watt scale, which is all the way to the top. So turn that light off. Ah, yeah. Now I'm on average. Ah, yeah. It pegs the 20 watt scale with no problem. Let's bump it up to a uh, 200 watt scale. Hello! I'm pretty close to 40. Hello? Hello? Yeah, 35, pretty consistent. But anyway, that's the mod. If you guys have any questions about that variable dead key, let me know, and I'll try to answer them. I didn't, I should have, I should have made the video uh, uh, including that part of it, but um, I didn't do it. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, Click like and subscribe. Thank you.